Our van is a fully electric 2015 Nissan EV200 with a 24 kilowatt hour battery pack. This was the only size battery option available back then, seven years ago. We bought the van second hand six years ago in 2016 and converted it to a camper van. The original 24 kilowatt hour battery gave the van a range of between 60 to 80 miles depending on driving style and road conditions. Despite this relatively low range, it's not stopped us clocking up 63,000 miles, including several long campervan trips around Europe, as far as Slovenia, Hungary, and several trips to southern Spain, and many to northern Scotland. As we proved and documented in our videos, the van, with the original 24 kWh battery, is quite capable of travelling long distance, provided this is done at a relaxed pace. On the whole, we found public charging to be available and reliable, even in more remote parts of continental Europe. In 2018, Nissan introduced a 40 kWh battery pack for the EMB200, with almost double the energy capacity. Even though our original 24 kWh battery pack is still very functional, with currently 83% of its original capacity remaining, the prospect of upgrading a van to double its current range at a reasonable cost was very appealing. This is how we got on. Good morning. Okay, it's an exciting morning this morning. I'm in the van and I'm off to the garage because the van is going to get a little battery upgrade. So when we got the van in, I think it was about 2018, the 40 kWh version um, of this van had only just come out and there definitely wasn't any of them available in the second hand market. But roll on um, a few years and I've been kind of keeping my eye <clears throat> out for the salvage um, 40 kilowatt hour EMB 200s um, for a possible battery upgrade. I mean, most of the time, I'd say probably 95% of the time, the 24 kilowatt hour pack suits our needs totally fine. And at one point, I convinced myself that it was to you know that we didn't need any extra any extra capacity. And and the reality is we didn't really, but. I've been at the same time I've been casually looking at salvage auctions and you know what happens when you casually look at auctions that's right um, a, uh, a suitable candidate has come up so I found a 2020 in V200 so it's basically one year old 40 kilowatt vehicle um, which had been on in a frontal collision but the battery pack was totally fine. Um, so I worked with this company called EV Breakers. They bought the, the whole, you know, Cat B write-off vehicle and removed the battery pack for me. Took some lease price screenshots of it, which was very handy. And um, yeah, then delivered the battery pack to me or, or to the local garage that I'm working with. And this is a garage I've got to know. Um, they're really keen to, to work on EVs. They haven't done a lot of, um, you know, battery swaps. Well, this was the first battery swap they've done, but they've done plenty of EV servicing and, you know, they're very familiar with working with heavy things like the battery pack and everything. And they're totally trained to work on, on high voltage. They were, they were really keen to, um, to be involved. And yeah, they were happy. They're going to be happy for me to, um, to be there, to go into the workshop. So um, yeah, I'll let you know, let you know how we get on. we can safely disconnect the um, high voltage lines you can see down there before we remove the pack is to remove the um, the high voltage disconnect which um, disconnects the pack into which reduces the voltage and in the MV200 the safety disconnect is um, underneath the center console so the new battery pack it's um, identical to the old one in terms of like physical dimensions all the bolt holes and everything are in exactly the same position so it should be quite an easy just drop the old pack and pop the new one in i think it's a few kilos heavier but really not much considering it's basically double the double the capacity it's basically since you know since from about 2013 2014 through 2018. Factory uh, cell technology just improved, so the energy density um, is a lot greater in, in the new pack, you know, without the size or the weight increasing too much. 
Once the new 40kW battery was fitted, we replaced the service plug, reconnected the 12 volt battery and powered up the vehicle. It powered up fine and the correct state of charge was shown on the display. This was really great to see and quite a relief. I'm afraid at this point I got a bit too excited and forgot to record any of this on video. Therefore, the least five screenshots you're looking at now and the photo of the dashboard are actually taken from other uh, sources I found online. The EV system warning light was illuminated on the dashboard and using LeaseSpy to scan for error codes we could see we had the P3102 um, invalid battery error code. This is totally expected and normal after doing a battery swap. At this point the vehicle um, it'll drive but it'll be in extreme limp mode. I think it's limited to 20 something miles an hour. Um, at this point um, there's various tricks which can be employed to let the vehicle accept the new battery. Um, I'll come on to more of these later. However, there is a new method to pair the battery with, um, with, with the vehicle using just leaf spy, which is, uh, which is pretty amazing. So really clever people have worked on this. Big thanks to Dalla from Dalla's EV Repair um, for left alerting me about this. So at this point, when that error message is visible, if we go to clear DTCs, there'll be an option on leaf spy to clear this DTC. Once that process is complete, the van will fully accept the new battery. The EV warning light will disappear from the dashboard and the vehicle will be totally drivable. Just testing the van without any can bridge installed. Um, as you can see, it's driving fine, no problem at all. Just try rapid charging, that works fine. Everything is fine except the uh, estimated range display is alternating between maximum range when fully charged and the actual range uh, now 93 miles at 66%. So as long as you can live with that, then uh, it's quite possible to have a battery upgrade without using, using a Cambridge. Rapid charging, um, here at our local GD Point rapid charger, and it's working, woohoo! According to OVMS, we're getting 43 kilowatts at 79%, which is fantastic. Everything seems to be working well. So yeah, I'm very pleased indeed, fantastic, fantastic range. Even though the vehicle is totally functional in this mode, I wanted the battery swap to be done to a high standard and for the dashboard display to work as it should do. Um, so I opted to fit a can bridge. So here we have the can bridge. So this can bridge is from Dala, Dala's EV repair in, uh, in Finland. And this little clever bit of electronics here sits in between the, um, the main battery pack and the VCM, the vehicle communication unit. Um, on the <clears throat> the can the EV can communication lines, so this here goes to the VCM, and this here goes to um, the two can lines coming from the battery. This bit has been programmed with the battery ID for my old battery, so it'll inject on the can messages the correct battery signals, um, so that the VCM, the onboard computer, the van. Um, kind of accepts the accepts the new battery without any error messages on on the dashboard. Um, so and yeah, all the range and everything is displayed correctly. Cambridge requires a permanent uh, 12 volt power supply. Um, so I've taken that from a fuse tap from the fuse box here on its own separate fuse. Um, one of them, the bottom one, is going to my um, dash cam I've got wired in, and the top one I've already ran the cable um, over to the other passenger footwell ready for the, the Cambridge to run off that. So the VCM in the, in the V200, I'm sitting in the driver's seat here, it's right hand drive. The VCM is actually located up under there. So now if we look under here, in the passenger footwell, I'm about to remove the glove box. This is where you get access to change the air filter, and it's pretty easy to do. Um, so under here, this unit here, this is the VCM. The vehicle control unit is basically the heart of uh, heart of the van, um, which controls everything about the, the driving and all that. So on this first connector here, um, I'll put up a diagram showing what pin number is it is and how I identified this. But I've already marked the two EV can lines here. It's the blue wire and the, the green wire. They're a twisted pair, twisted around each other. 
and they're like on the top two pins here. I put a little diagram showing what pin, exactly what pin numbers it is, and how to identify them. So basically, I'm going to cut these two wires here, and we're going to put the can bridge in line on these wires. Right. Wish me luck. back together. Cambridge has been installed, tidily located up under there. Success! Now the Cambridge has been fitted, the dashboard display is now correct. The Cambridge I fitted, the hardware is identical to the Muxang Cambridge. Um, the software is slightly different. Dalla has added in a few extra features um, to be able to adjust the charging rate and set a maximum rapid charge rate, which can help avoiding the battery overheating on long journeys. I'll be testing out these features in the future. I'm super happy with how the upgrade has gone. Seeing more than triple digits shown on the range display is totally awesome. It's given the van a new lease of life and hopefully it'll be good for many 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 years to come.